We hear that the, this year's vaccine's only been 10% effective. Will we ever get past this annual guessing game that the, the companies have to do where we have a more effective vaccine every year? Well, three things to understand. First, every year we track how flu changes around the world to try to predict what's going to happen here. Uh, Australia had a 10% effectiveness. We think we may see a 30% effectiveness. That's still a whole lot better than a 0% effectiveness, which is what you get if you don't get the vaccine. Second, there are lots of things you can do besides or in addition to vaccination that can help. Uh, wash your hands, cover your cough. If you're sick, don't go out and make other people sick. That really does increase the spread through society. Right. Yeah. And if you're sick, go to the hospital or your doctor and see about getting Tamiflu because that could reduce your illness and keep you out of the hospital I or make you uh, not get as sick as you would be otherwise. I've been washing my hands like crazy <laughs> and, I, and I got the flu vaccine. Now that we know more about how bad this particular strand is, is there anything else people can do? Are there any follow-up vaccines or anything like that? Because again, you know, as you know, well know about New York City, it's kind of hard to avoid contact with a lot of other potentially sick people. It is, and every year that's why flu causes tens of millions of illnesses and hundreds of thousands of hospitalizations. It's why it's important that everyone get a flu shot, uh, but there are limited things that we can do as individuals. There are things that we can do as a society. Some of the things uh, in, in really insisting that people not go to work sick, cover your mouth when you cough, do make a difference. Uh, if you do get sick, important to consider getting medication because that can keep you out of the hospital or make you yeah. less sick. Meg? Dr. Frieden, it's, uh, it's Meg Terrell out in San Francisco. Uh, of course, flu is a huge problem, but we're also hearing about perhaps the U.S. and the world's lack of preparedness for other huge pandemics. And if we get something that we really have no way of addressing, pharmaceutical companies may not be incentivized based on past experiences to really step up there and put aside their more profit-making work to work there. What solutions do you see, if any, on the horizon for, for fixing that problem? In Ebola, the companies did come forward and come up with new products. They worked hard. They put their own money into it. So there was a lot of really good governance, good citizenship during Ebola. We need that kind of approach even when there's not a global epidemic. That means that Congress needs to come up with the money to fund the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention to be able to strengthen the systems around the world to find, stop, and prevent health threats where they emerge so we can fight them there and don't have to fight them here. The IV bag thing is freaking me out. I mean, when you read about this, how such a basic thing can be in such short supply, and I understand the Puerto Rico storms hit, but the articles have also raised concerns about the quality of these bags, period, over the last couple of years. What can be done there to quickly get more IV bags up and running and make sure that they're not defective? It's important that we recognize that if you have a just-in-time delivery system, you're going to have a problem when you have a surge. So you have to anticipate surges like flu and build up your stock before them right. and come up with redundant systems. In an emergency, you don't want to be breaking the glass and trying something new. You want to have a robust system that you can scale up when needed. By the way, is it my imagination or are we hearing more about fatalities this year than in past years? Uh, it's likely that we may tragically see more fatalities this year. This strain of flu is usually tougher on the elderly as well as on kids. So uh, that just speaks to your suggestion that if you get sick, you know, seek care immediately, right? Absolutely. Don't, don't wait. Don't just get in bed and, and wait for it to go away. Particularly if you have an underlying health condition, a lung problem or a heart problem, or you're older, these are the people who are more likely to get into serious problems, or women who are pregnant who can get very sick from flu. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.